Welcome to Evolution of Self with me, Britannia. Hello and welcome. So this week I'm going to be sharing how you can build your own self-belief. And I talked about this in the last couple of videos in regards to resilience. But it's not just resilience where having a good self-belief or belief in yourself is important. It's important in every aspect of your life because whatever we believe, we make real. So if you believe in yourself, then life is something that you can engage with because you know that you will find an answer or find a way past challenges as they come up. But if you don't believe in yourself, then life suddenly becomes a much more scary place because you won't feel like you have the tools or the equipment to handle what comes up in life. Now, self-belief is, is something that you can develop. It's something you can grow. And I'm going to, later on in this video, I'm going to share how you can do that. But I want to dive a little bit deeper into self-belief. So, and into beliefs in general. So, whatever we believe, we make real. And how this happens is when we believe something to be true, our subconscious creates thoughts and actions that align with that belief. So if, for example, I believe that I'm not particularly clever, then I will have resistance to taking part in things that challenge my mental capacity. And because I believe that I'm not good in that area, I will avoid it. I, will, I might even get fearful when I'm put into a situation where it requires me to be like that. And this is the catch. When you are scared and you're in fear, your brain responds by putting you into fight, flight and freeze mode. And when you do that, you go into your animalistic brain and it takes focus away from your higher thinking. So if I believe that I'm not particularly clever and I'm put into a situation that challenges my cleverness, my brain, <laughs> in the panic that I'm not clever, is going to shut down and prove to me that I really am not very clever. And it's not just in that particular belief. All sorts of beliefs that we have create the thoughts and the actions that perpetuate the belief. And belief in oneself, to me, is one of the most important things for us to have. In fact, it's so important to me that I remember when my kids first started school, thinking that if they walk away from school with nothing other than belief in themselves, I would be really happy. Because the world is then, it's an exciting place to be, to go out and explore. And they'll have everything they need to survive. When I look at people in the world that have come and bounced back from all sorts of incredibly challenging situations, um, only to succeed in the most amazing ways, the one thing they all had was self-belief. So now that I've bigged it all up, <laughs> how do you develop it? Well, the first step to developing self-belief is to set yourself challenges that stretch you at least 20% out of your comfort zone. And the more you create these challenges for yourself and achieve them, and that's the most important thing, the more you're reprogramming your subconscious mind to believe you're somebody that can. And I say 20% because 20% is enough for you to feel like you are doing something that is uncomfortable, that stretches you and that moves you in a direction. But it's not so great that the challenge is going to be too daunting. Because however much you challenge yourself, you have to realise there's going to be pushback from, from life, from your beliefs in yourself. So 20% is a doable amount and it creates enough examples or enough feedback for your subconscious to start believing in yourself. This is by no means to say that you shouldn't stretch yourself more and if you want to, you're more than welcome to. But just remember that the more you stretch yourself, the more pu pushback and feedback, negative feedback, you're going to get from your subconscious and from life. So for instance, if I decided I was going to go and run a 10 mile run, I'm really, really unfit at the moment. There is no ways I could run a 10 mile run. First of all, I would start dreading it. So that would be my subconscious <laughs> manipulating me already to start doubting myself. I would, um, I'd be quite fearful because I'd know that I wasn't really up to the challenge. And I would also physically find it virtually impossible to do a 10 mile run. 
Now all of these things are the feedback that I'm talking about. It also happens when you start something completely new. So for instance, if I, I'm just going to stick with the exercising because it's in my head, if I hadn't exercised for a really, really long time and I decide I'm going to start exercising, just that initial step into exercising, I'm going to have a lot of resistance. So when you decide to do something new, even though logically you think it's not a big thing, make sure that you make the steps really small so that it isn't as intimidating, even though logically you know that it shouldn't be. Because that's where the resistance comes from, is the self-doubt, the, the, it's the subconscious not having data to know that you can do it, even though logically you know you can. Um, and that's where self-doubt comes, it's where uncertainty, it's where, you know when you have these conversations and you kind of argue yourself into not doing something? That is all the subconscious manipulating you into doing what you've always done and to keeping you in your safe zone and not allowing you to stretch and grow. So, to build your self-confidence, you need to find challenges that stretch you 20, at least 20%. Now this is the main important thing. You, finding those challenges is all well and good, but you also need to make sure that you achieve those challenges and you need to be achieving them on a rate of at least 80% of the time. Anything less than 80% won't help tip their balance in favour of developing your self-belief. And the reason for that is that we're reprogramming the subconscious mind from one of believing that you can't to one of believing that you can. And the only way to do that is by feeding it data that shows that you can. And that's what these little challenges are doing. They're little challenges that are giving your subconscious mind information saying, I'm someone who can. Now, you might think that the challenges need to be in alignment with whatever it is you're trying to achieve. And, and yes, that would be great, but they don't necessarily. Because when we're building self-belief, it's such a broad category that it could be challenges in any area. And not only the challenges, it's really important for you to notice if you are keeping your word or not. Because your word, when you, when you commit to doing something, your subconscious takes note of this. And if you don't do what you say you're going to do, your subconscious believes that you're someone who doesn't do what they say they're going to do. But when you do do what you say you're going to do, then the subconscious believes you are somebody who does what they say you're going to do. And it will create thoughts and um, emotions that support those beliefs. And all of this ties into increasing your self-belief. So just to summarise, if you want to increase your self-belief, you need to be setting yourself challenges that stretch you at least 20%. You need to be achieving those challenges and completing them at least 80% or more to be able to increase your self-belief. On top of that, you also need to be very aware of what you commit to and what you promise, because those are also like mini challenges. And the more that you are your word, the more that you keep your word, the more that your subconscious will believe that you're somebody who can and does. And that's really all there is to it. <laughs> It sounds really simple, but I know it's not always as simple as it sounds. And if you do want to do this and you want to make this part of your life, I would recommend that you sit down once a week and you reflect on the past week and you set yourself challenges for the following week. And don't be too hard on yourself. In the initial stages, you might fall down and you might slip up. But if you keep trying, then you'll find this an incredibly powerful tool that can transform your whole entire life. And if you've enjoyed listening to this, Please subscribe and support me and like it because that helps me to get seen by more people. And if you really enjoyed it, um, please feel free to share it with other people. If you want any other res resources, you can find them on my website, www.britannia.com, B-R-I-T-T-A-N-Y-A.com. And I have a free course as well, which I will share with you in the notes, which is five steps to five steps towards self-awareness, which is just five lovely little tools that you receive over five days that help you to increase your own self-awareness. So much love from me to you, and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.